Good afternoon. Welcome to Third Street Gallery. Uh, we have two artist talks uh, with the shows for this month, uh, both of whom are long-term members of the gallery. Uh, the first is Connie Cohn, who will be talking about the photography exhibit, uh, and then Jackie Ferretti, who will be talking about her oils, which are on the other side. So I will. Okay. Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. This is fun, especially some people that I didn't expect to have as a guest, so this is great. Um, so what am I going to say about these photographs? Um, I've been a working artist since 1973, and I started as a photographer working with um, 8x10 cameras, some 4x5, 8x10, 11x14, with giant tripods, which my husband would often carry for me, being a nice man. Um, and I printed in platinum palladium, which was a non-silver process that was quite popular and actually it was popular at the turn of the last century and was invented in 1873 because it was a method that didn't fade and didn't fox. Uh, photographs in the late 1800s um, often have brown spots when you look at them and that's from the sulfur in the paper. And then the, image, the images themselves would fade. So platinum was a wonderful way to print, especially with the kind of um, photographs that I was taking, a lot of still lives um, and landscapes and some nudes, actually. Um, and I started doing handwork on my photographs. <clears throat> and in order to do that, I needed to take a drawing class, which meant that I also took watercolor, which was not my greatest thing. Um, then more drawing, then oil painting, um, and then I took some classes at Moore College of Art here in Philadelphia, um, and then got my MFA from the University of Pennsylvania in 94. By that time, I had stopped photographing, and I was working uh, mostly um, in charcoal at the beginning, and then um, with Sumi ink, essentially, and then more oil paint. And the work that I did then was based on First World War trench poetry. I'm a child of the Vietnam War, I guess you could say, and so the British trench poets, <coughs> uh, the poetry is really heartrending, and it meant a lot of, to me as I read it, and so I, I would see images as I read it, and that's how the, that work evolved. Um, a few years ago, I had a 25-year retrospective of that work down in Delaware, uh, which was really exciting to see because you don't think... You don't expect, when you look back at 25 years, that you can actually see the strains of the work from 25 years ago recurring over and over again through that whole 25 years. And even though the method changed, the medium changed, it was definitely I who was making those, those images. Um, and I was ready to go back to that at the beginning of COVID. And I started working on it. And I just couldn't. I, I couldn't go down to my studio and work with this, these images that were so painful. And I think that uh, some people did a lot of work during COVID, other people did not do a lot. I'm, I'm sad to say I was one of those people who did not do a lot of work. At the end of that, I, I thought, okay, now it's over, everything's great, I'm gonna go back and see my friends, and I still couldn't do it. And then I thought, <laughs> Why don't I go back to the work that gave me such pleasure at the very beginning of my career, and that's photography. I did not want to work in platinum and palladium anymore. I really wasn't interested in black and white. And so I started photographing flowers, particularly, and landscape as well. I had a show here in January, um, for artists and their friends, and that was all color photography of landscape. Um, the flower photographs came together when I realized that I'd really been taking a lot of them. Um, and I felt that it was really nice to see something that was just really beautiful to look at. Um, I've enjoyed printing these, I've enjoyed framing them, I enjoy looking at them, and that's how these flowers came about. I think that we all need something that just makes your heart sing every so often. Um, some of these were in my backyard, some of these away on vacation, some were at actually Rittenhouse Square, these two. Um, you know, you walk down the street and you see something beautiful and you have to stop and take a picture. Um, I think even though I'm not 
I don't consider myself a photographer mainly anymore. Obviously, as one of my friends said earlier today, you know, the, the way we trained our eyes back 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you know, you never forget that. It's like riding on a bicycle. You know, once you're a photographer, I guess you're always a photographer. Um, I don't think I have anything, I know I don't have anything really deep to say about these other than they've, actually I do have something to say about this. Um, early on in my photography, I took a master class in New York with Philippe Holtzman, uh, the fashion photographer, man who, uh, whose photographs of uh, Einstein were on the Einstein stamp. He was really an interesting man. And we talked a lot about color photography, even though what we were doing with him was all black and white. And he was really adamant that color had to be intense. It had to be pulled together in a tight, in a tight way, that it shouldn't be just sort of hit or miss all over the place. And I think that that has stood me in good stead, thinking about that, even though I don't, until the last year, I don't think I'd really taken very many color photographs. Um, I like the fact that the color in these are so intense. These are printed on an etching paper, uh, which I think takes the color really, really well. Um, and I'm pleased with them. I don't really have more that I can say about them. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm an amateur photographer, because now I discover, you know, taking pictures here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but um, as, a, as a photographer, uh, when you take a picture, then you start editing, mm -hmm. or it, you know, from mm -hmm. the beginning, it's the perfect because you, you uh, your eyes is now a more expert than an amateur photographer. When I first started photographing, I was particularly um, influenced by Edward Weston and Ansel Adams, for that matter, talking about the image had to be in the negative. It was in the negative. It was not going to be burned and highlighted and all of that. You pretty much, what you saw is what was printed. Um, for so all of the these, is, is this? Mm -hmm. There was no, they're photoshopped only to crop them for this uh, dimension. Yeah. Um, I didn't do anything to highlight the color. I didn't do anything to uh, rearrange where they were in the image, in, you know, in the camera. Um, they haven't been sharpened. What you see is what you get. So I have yes, a comment Barbara. <laughs> and a question. My first comment is, it does remind me of the paintings because of the amazing attention to composition and space. And it's beautiful. I Thank you. Coming right through. And then the question may be taboo, but what kind of a camera did you use? An iPhone. I was wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was funny because the photographs that I took in France last year, I had my Nikon with me, and they can't compare. I mean, it was really funny, and I don't know whether I'm not seeing it as well with a Nikon as I am with a phone. And again, they weren't cropped or anything. I think um, composition is something I've been dealing with since 1973. So I mean, that's that's what it is. So, and I, I think it's. I think I, I agree with you actually about what you said about that in many ways it's not that different from the work that I do, the other work that I do, even though it's a completely different medium. Oh, thank you. I still can't believe how sharp these things are. I was nervous about having them printed this size, and actually they could be even larger. The, um, the, the, the imagery is so sharp, it's incredible. Yeah. 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 Jackie? I was just asking about this one right here in the center of the white. This one? And right next to it. Yeah, that one. This one. I can't keep my eyes off that. It's gorgeous. Thank you. That was, uh, again, that was in my yard. Wow. And I kept looking at it, and um, I did flip that. I think that when I photographed that, it was pointing down, but I liked it better that way. The space and the, and the way the white and green. The greens, the, that's the thing that I... If you ask me a question about what's the color of the show, I would say green. I mean, it's just amazing the different colors are green from that really yellow green here and the light greens here. It's, yeah, the greens and that. Yeah, that's my fish pond. Is that your green? Mm-hmm. So the artichokes were my favorite. Just Which one? The artichokes. Oh. You know, I'll tell you back to what you're talking about, how your work 
there, there is definitely cohesion. It's, it reminds me of the, the map, mm -hmm. the map um, prints. Yeah, yours, the one that's interesting because map of the way the lines. Yeah, yeah. It's, that, that's, I am very much drawn to it, I think, because yeah. of that. Yeah. I think that, you know, when I, it was, that was in a uh, vegetable stand that had, that must have been 12, 15 feet long. And, you know, when you looked at these things, the way they were laid out, um, it was like a river of wonderful yeah. color and vegetable. Uh, and beautiful. I just thought that was beautiful. It really is beautiful. Don't you want to eat those radishes, too? <laughs> They're really great. The very first one was the one with the roses. And uh, I can't remember, what, I think I bought roses, and I don't know why I bought three, that, three uh, sheaths, sheaves of roses, but uh, I did, probably because of the color. Color is really pretty important to me and my other work, so I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that uh, this is such brilliant color. Beautiful. So, thank you. So, question, um, as a poet photographer, mm -hmm. I absolutely loved one of the roses because of the shape that moves through it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just absolutely wonderful. Yeah, we could probably say that it was a good thing that it's next to the radishes. Because I was standing there watching the radishes go like this, and then this going like that too. So, yeah, thank you. And I was going to make a comment about iPhone versus an icon. Um, whether or not, as we get older, it's nice to see what you get on an iPhone mm -hmm. versus a raw file, which is not what you <laughs> see. That's uh, true. Essentially, so you have to end up to with it right. you get what you see. Well, you know, it was funny because when I first started photographing, of course, with a view camera, it's, um, with a view camera, it's upside down, flipped and everything. So you get underneath the black cloth, you know, and you're, you're trained that you see what it's going to look like. And sometimes somebody will say, oh, can I get underneath the black cloth and see what you're looking at? And they look at it and go, and they're trying to go upside down to see it. It's really pretty funny. So... I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs>
And so you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's just the excitement of painting that way. I wasn't, uh, I had no particular object or theme or anything in, in mind. And I kept seeing the same uh, type of marks and lines. Some of the marks, I'll, and I'll show you with each one, which ones I'm talking about, but they, some have letters and numbers, the numbers of five and three kept coming up, for instance, and different, um, different marks that you could see a lot here that kind of go down in rows, all right, and this way, and when you come up closer to it in here, uh, you can see there's a row of, of letters and lines that keep, uh, keep showing up. And I, uh, that, was, I, that didn't bother me as I was painting. I just thought, well, that's, that's okay, that's fine. But um, then I went to the next painting and they kept coming up and I thought, I'm working on a whole new painting, a whole new canvas. And I went back to my studio and I thought, and those lines are coming back, like they're just showing up. <laughs> this is a new painting. I don't, didn't ask them to do that. You know? <laughs> so it was very strange for me. So I, um, so for instance, in here, this, it's more subtle. Uh, uh, and the, the guests are, so it was lines, lines and numbers, and guests were, there were a lot of uh, uh, human faces, and some of them were kind of horrific and scary. And uh, so I was a little triggered by that and uncomfortable because <laughs> I thought, why, why are these figures showing up? And then I accepted it and, then I, and I realized, just as uh, artists always do, you know, um, it's your work. Uh, you, you just let ha happen what, what's supposed to happen and just go with it. And there's no reason to question it. It's simply what's going on in your head and how, and, and there's the, the diff that's what happens, you know. So I went with it and that's why I called them, I thought, they're guests, you know, I welcome you, you are my guest, welcome. Be where you want to be, and, <laughs> and that's okay, right? So th uh, this one, it's little, this was an older one. This, this one, these are the only two that were, that were paintings that I had already done previously. The rest of them were all, these were all done in the last few months. And, but I, after I was putting the show together, I thought, I went back to look at my other paintings in my house and I thought, wait a minute, the, look, the, there they are. This didn't just happen. You've been doing this. This has been in your work for a long time. <laughs> and so that, that was it. So that made me more like, all right, then it's really just, uh, just part of the, what's happening. And, and this one was the, is one that was different in that there were specific things that I know that I was thinking about. I did not, again, I didn't know what was going to happen, just went into the painting. But I knew, I knew that I was upset about the, uh, the uh, people who were drowning, the children. Uh, they would find them, they would just drown off the boat and, and they would just, you would find them everywhere from the, in the from, um, on the beach and everything, and, and it was just so horrific. It was, it was in my head when I was painting this, and so, so it just comes up. So I saw all of a sudden, I saw like a foot, you know, upside down, and this is a, a and again, like I realized it after I painted it, okay, so this is a girl upside down, and subconsciously I, I was thinking that, you know, but didn't know it as I was painting it. But uh, here's one foot and one here, she's, she's falling down, and this is her hair and her head. And, um, and after I was finished, I happened to see that, oh, there's a boat right here, and, and people are behind it. And here's all numbers and digits all around, here, 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 all over. And, uh, and letters, like very uh, beautiful, uh, exaggerated letters, you know, so I, and this also comes up, row after row, and I also invite you when I stop talking, <laughs> but if you want to, and I was doing this in my studio, but I have a, a, <laughs> a 
yes, yeah, that you can actually see, really. Because I would go, I'd go well, that's really what I'm seeing. You know, th these are animals and people, and, and they are surely there. It's not like you would make a mark and think, oh, if you kind of squint and look at it, it sort of looks like a cat. No, these are animals, like looking right at you. <laughs> so, um, so you can see, when you, if you want to come up and, and kind of look that way, you can see the letters much more clearly. And um, this one is more subtle. I don't know whether you could tell, but, but it's, it's a face. And it's a, I, here's the two eyes and the nose and the mouth. Can you see that? Yeah. OK. And um, this one is hard to see, but there are a lot of anim animals in here. And this one, if you look, look far away, this is a, there's a, a man's a silhouette of a man in there. And also cats and things, you know. And let's see, this one, <clears throat> which I call Portal, um, just had the same feeling, you know, the, of the other paintings. They had the same kind of a look, you know. But uh, it, re it reminded me of a door, you know, and uh, it also has the same marks all over it. You know, the same kind of little digits and marks going up and down. And if you look really close, um, there are little kind of squared off areas that look like those little silhouettes of like you're looking at in a window or something and there's a whole vision of somebody in their living room. You know, like there's, there's, like there's the little stories in each little space. So, and I, and I just, I remember when I made that, I, I for some reason, I, I really loved the figure. And my friend, Mary Beth, kind of laughed at it. She said, it's a, what did you say? It was a pickle or something? Yeah. <laughs> she says, well, it's a pickle. I said, the shape of it. The shape of it. Okay. <laughs> but, but I really like the shape of it a lot. You know, I was really enjoying that. Now this one, if you really use this, you, you could really see um, the textures of, of faces and animals uh, when you look really close all over it. Um, but I, I really loved this happening because you could see the same digits coming up and down and they just keep running all around it, you know? And, um, but I, I'm, I really love texture. I love working with things and having a lot of feel to it, you know. And this one is um, a little bit different. Um, so before the black painting went on, it, I painted red. And I loved the fact that, because I didn't want the red, I thought red was too bright and bold. <laughs> so, so that I painted it. But it wants to be there. So it's in certain light, I mean, I thought, wow, you could see the red. It's, it's still there. It's still there whether I want it or not. It's coming, you know, it's going to be there. And then I love all these little different lines and everything that, that were like these textures. And this was the, the last one I did. And um, it's, it's the most simple one. And uh, I, you know, I thought of a nest you know, with it, a, a bird's nest, like this is the nest and, and this, like these are birds, you know, just floating. And I'm obsessed with birds, so <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't uh, you know, uh, surprised at that. But I felt like uh, with every, all the anxiety that I was having with the rest of them, but, but coming to feel better about it and, uh, and appreciate it, what was going on. And this, was like this was this was kind of it's you don't see all that here it's kind of it's cal it calmed down it's like it's just a calming force at the end <laughs> you know so everything's oil and um, oh I didn't I I forgot to just go a quick background I was an art teacher for 25 years and um, I and I really got I'm mostly a painter and I I my master's was in um, Meditation, okay, and the effects of meditation on creativity. And I did a lot of study with um, a Zen Mountain Monastery, where, I, where I'm a, a member. And they, um, there's, so, there's so much about when you're doing your art and how you're thinking about it and how you're understanding it, which I've learned from J. 
just practicing Buddhism. I, I also am a uh, found object artist, and, and I like things like that that you can just redo and find in the trash and so forth and make something out of it. And, but if anyone has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Wiping? Scraping. I, I squ uh, not as I'm paint. Well, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I do. I did. I do an awful. I love to scrape, and I. Yeah. I, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, like especially this. I, I love to scrape, and on this, it's just the texture of it, and really lit it with my fingers and scrape and and take everything apart, put paint on it take it off totally, destroy it, and start all over again. It's like, oh, yeah. There's no tool in my studio that is safe. It could be anything, not, not, not an art tool at all, that I will use it. I will, I will use it to push in and like, to scrape and to like, do any kind of mark. So this, like, so this mark was just uh, as I was finishing it. Uh, it, was all, it was all the same before I did that. And I just took a, a, some kind of a knife, you know, and I just went, you know. Like, <laughs> and it's just, I liked it, you know. <laughs> but it's interesting that it sort of looks like wood, though. Yeah. yeah. I love texture. I, I love texture and to play with clay. And I, I, I love to rip it apart and feel it. I'm always feeling it, you know. <laughs> I have to, if you're, I'm awful going into a store or something, I have to touch everything and feel it. I don't want anything to be, uh, the worst thing would be, oh, it's cute, you know, or, so, or it's, it's what everyone would think it should be, you know, like, all right, I won't do it, you know. <laughs> I'm afraid of that sort of thing, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. It was very nice to you.